Thanks to the um, advisor, uh, the um, Zespri for inviting me to speak here. It's a great honour. And I'm going to talk about, um, as Rinke said, the role of uh, kiwi fruit in managing blood glucose. <clears throat> and uh, this is also linked in with a high value nutrition research program uh, which I'm leading <laughs> called um, Kiwi Fruity and Friendly. And the aim of, of the research in that, as well as uh, the work I've been doing for Zespri so far, is to, to try and show that kiwi fruit have a really uh, important role to play in a well-balanced diet. A nice example of a whole food used in the right way and contributing to health. First of all, a few acknowledgements, of course, to Zespri, who funded some of my research and uh, uh, a number of other people involved at Plant and Food Research in Palmerston North, but also um, in, extending as far as Ginny Willis in, in Christchurch. And I'll um, talk to you about uh, certain properties of kiwi fruit that su suggest it might be uh, beneficial in, in uh, controlling blood glucose, um, how we've tested this um, and the measurement of the glycemic potency of kiwi fruit and how we might use the data that we're, we're getting um, to help people choose more healthy diets that include kiwi fruit, of course. And of course, the overall aim is to help kiwi fruit to sell more kiwi, zestfully to sell more kiwi fruit. Um, but the challenge is that um, they're having to sell it into an increasingly diabetic, sugar averse market. So we need to show that they're safe and healthy. So, um, as I've just mentioned, the problems and possibilities for kiwi fruit, the problems is, is, include the uh, market becoming more fearful of sugars as diabetes rates increase, especially in Asia. Um, kiwi fruit, and no doubt, are a sugar-rich food. They are a carbohydrate food, but the sugars in them are also 50% fructose, and fructose is bad news at the moment. There's been a lot written about the harm that fructose can do, but um, in actual fact, in a fruit where the fructose is, is balanced with um, glucose, the, the uh, fructose and glu glucose actually um, cooperate metabolically, and fructose is actually um, assists in glucose disposal. So I think that's an um, affair that's arisen from a number of trials that have been done using excessively high levels of, of fructose in uh, probably unrealistic diets, except compared with the um, unhealthy diets where there are high intakes of uh, fructose derived from corn syrup. But on the other hand, um, kiwi fruit have got a number of very positive aspects, including uh, vitamin C, which you've heard about. Um, and Richard Gary, whose um, talk I unfortunately missed yesterday, has um, shown how the um, kiwi fruit is able to help digestion um, through the laxative effect. Um, and it's interesting that they're able to do that with such a small amount of dietary fibre present. But in terms of blood glucose control, we want to show that used the right way, kiwi fruit can make a, a positive contribution to protection against um, glycemia and its long-term effects. And of course, this is the problem. 400 million or more diabetic people uh, in Asia. By 2030, the estimates vary, but one of the Chinese interviewers this morning pointed out that there were 500 million people in China who are pre-diabetic at the moment. And it's, a, it's an interesting problem as it becomes apparent that it's not necessarily associated with obesity, I mean, full-blown body obesity, but with um, increasing fat in the pancreas. So a large number of the population can, can look lean, but they've had a, just a 1% or 2% increase in fat in the pancreas, and that's precipitating diabetes. 
So um, even amongst people who aren't overweight in Asia, this is going to become a, an increasing concern. So the challenges are to show that kiwi fruit um, is beneficial in the short term, in other words, in its um, effect on postprandial or after meal blood glucose responses, but also in the long term in um, counteracting the metabolic and um, other effects that are mediated by oxidative stress and that sort of thing, and inf inflammation that lead ultimately to diabetic complications. And uh, the challenge is also, how do we incorporate kiwi fruit into the diet so that it has a net health benefit? Well, our research um, started off looking at the properties of kiwi fruit after it had been digested. And uh, these were in vitro studies, and we, you can't actually, oh, sorry. I was trying to use the uh, pointer, but I won't. I'll use my finger. Um, this is the volume of kiwi fruit um, within 100, 100 gram fruit the relative volume of one, that's one kiwi fruit, but after in vitro digestion, you see the, the uh, dietary fiber remnants actually increase to about um, four times the original volume. So two kiwi fruit would give about 800 um, mils of kiwi fruit dispersion. So it's a very large uh, swelling effect in the foregut. And within that matrix, where you've got a lot of dispersed cell wall remnants interacting, so there's a, a rheological effect, increased viscosity, and um, a slow, slowing down of processes that are dependent on rheology, you get a number of effects. Um, there's a slight suppression of digestion, and you can see on the left um, two curves that show um, simulated blood glucose responses based on in vitro digestion results. The middle graph shows the effect of the dispersion on glucose diffusion. It's reduced by about 40%, and I've just done some work with sun gold showing about a 50% reduction in glucose diffusion. And the graph on the right shows the, um, the effect of the cell wall remnants from kiwi fruit, from the digested kiwi fruit on mixing in the lumen. And these are all processes that are involved in, um, in moving the glucose to the gut wall where it can be absorbed. So any retardation in these processes will contribute to a slowing of the reduction in the glycemic response, a slowing of glucose absorption. So we sort of... Um, tested this in a study, and this is, the study was bigger than shown here, but here are two graphs from the study. The, the blue line shows the blood glucose response to uh, kiwi fruit added to um, a whole wheat breakfast biscuit. And the, the higher of the two curves, the dark one, shows the amount of sugar that was in the kiwi fruit also added to the um, wheat and breakfast cereal. So the difference between those two curves is not due to the sugar, because both the diets were equal in carbohydrate. It's due to other factors in the kiwi fruit. Probably the uh, cell wall remnants that I showed you, but it could also be other effects, like from the uh, acidity in the fruit, delaying gastric emptying, maybe the effect of polyphenols. We don't know for sure, but we know from this graph that there are other components in the kiwi fruit that are responsible partly for, for reducing the blood glucose response when kiwi fruit is consumed in the presence of a food. So this is an interactive effect. And it shows that the, uh, there's no hypoglycemic overshoot. So homeostasis is more even. But of course, in a dietetic or dietary context, you want to include kiwi fruit in the diet without increasing energy intake or carbohydrate intake. So this shows the kind of effect that you get when you 
substitute, partially substitute kiwi fruit for the um, wheat and breakfast cereal. And in this case, the, um, the whole wheat cereal was about half substituted by kiwi fruit. And you can see that there's um, a pretty big drop. And of course, that will be largely due to the substitution of the um, <coughs> kiwi fruit sugars, which are half fruit sugar, in other words, half fructose, and uh, also the other effects that I showed you in the previous slide. And on the other hand, I think it's important when you're doing an, to remember also that when you're doing an equi-carbohydrate substitution of a largely starchy food, like the wheat and biscuit cereal, when the starch is hydrolyzed, it actually um, gives a 110% recovery of glucose because of the hydrolysis. And this shows the um, distribution of, um, of the area under the curve. You can see that between 120 and 180 minutes, the, uh, the glucose reference and the wheat and biscuit were negative, whereas the kiwi fruit plus the wheat and biscuit remained slightly positive. It just shows that the blood glucose is being maintained a little bit better. So as part of this work, we wanted to get some measurements of just how um, effective kiwi fruit is or what its, what its glycemic potency is compared with um, other foods. And to do this, we need to really be able to express the glycemic effect of the foods on the same basis. And one basis is in terms of glucose equivalents. So you're expressing the food's potency in terms of um, how much glucose it would take to have the same effect as the food. And this just shows the uh, graph, the experiment, the results of the experiment where we uh, measured the relative glycemic potency of um, two kiwi fruit, sun gold and Hayward, compared with the glucose reference. It's much lower, but it allowed us to calculate that um, kiwi fruit. One kiwi fruit, 100 grams, is equivalent to about 6.6 .6 grams of glucose in its glycemic impact. 100 grams of the wheat and breakfast cereal uh, was equivalent to about 46 grams of glucose. And of course, the glucose reference is 100. And on, the, on the, um, your right, you can see the um, kiwi fruit in yellow in comparison with uh, a range of other foods on a per 100 gram basis. So that shows the relative glycemic potency of the food, but um, of course we don't eat 100 grams of raw food, we eat them on, on a per serving basis. So if you convert to a per serving basis, you get this kind of um, picture. Kiwi fruit is still uh, very low. It's around about the same as a, a number of other fruits, but certainly it's um, even though it's uh, sun gold kiwi fruit, it's a nice sweet fruit to eat. It's, it's no um, more glycemic than orange or apple. And it's a lot less glycemic than a number of other foods, including uh, a number of carbohydrate staples. So what the aim would be would, is to be able to include kiwi fruit in the diet by substitution of other, sta other staples. We don't want to say that uh, people should just eat kiwi fruit and that, that will lower blood glucose. Uh, it's, it has to be done on an exchange basis so that the um, overall carbohydrate intake is more or less constant and, 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 and the energy intake because of that. <coughs> so, um, what we can do is express the glycemic potency of the kiwi fruit in the same way as we can a nutrient, but in terms of glucose equivalence. If we, had a, if we were allowed to have a glycemic impact measure, it would look like, like this in a food label. Um, what that says is that the um, kiwi fruit ha would have the same effect as six grams of glucose 
And it's not too unlike um, some other um, nutrients in the food label that are expressed as equivalents based on their effect. So, having um, been able to estimate the glycemic glucose equivalent, in, in other words, the glycemic impact of a range of foods on a per-serving basis, and we can do that approximately by calculating glycemic load from glycemic index values, um, we can then work out pretty easily how substitution of, or partial substitution of kiwi fruit for another food would reduce the glycemic impact. And you can see the, uh, <coughs> the carbohydrate content of one and two kiwi fruit down the bottom, and if you looked at, say, um, a serving of white bread, two slices, if you substituted one kiwi fruit for that on an equal serving basis, you'd still be left with about 20 grams of, of bread, and uh, you get a new glycemic impact of 18.9 glucose equivalents. And that would represent about a 16% decrease. That's with one kiwi fruit. And uh, um, glycemic index has, uh, um, is, a, is a sort of percentage scale, and high glycemic index is 70, low is 55 or, or, or less. So there's only a 15% difference between high and low glycemic index. So in actual fact, substitution, partial substitution of one kiwi fruit uh, for bread would have reduced the glycemic potency of the bread, the equivalent of going from high GI to low GI. And you can see that for most of those other foods listed, um, the effect is even greater. And of course, um, the big benefit about including kiwi fruit by substitution of uh, a starchy staple, and, and many starchy staples are more or less totally extruded starch, like, like a lot of noodles. Um, the great benefit is that vitamin C levels are increased, as well as levels of phenolics and um, probably a lot of other things that we haven't measured yet while the carbohydrate content stays about the same. So another question that arises is, when would be the best time to have kiwi fruit? Well, from our research, um, if you're going to do it on a sort of carbohydrate exchange basis, we've found that um, there may be an advantage in having the kiwi fruit about 30 minutes before the wheat bix, sorry, the wheat and biscuit. And um, you can see in this graph that um, on the left, the, the wheat and breakfast cereal graph is, is um, call that 100, and the sun gold, which is SG and wheat bix, is, is about 40% less. But if you had the sun gold 30 minutes before the wheat bix, then you uh, really decapitate the blood glucose response, which is quite an interesting effect. Probably because the, uh, the sun gold response uh, at, half the, at half the dose, which it, it, it would be if you fit, when you fed it on its loan, it caused a, um, a lower response, but then um, you've got the homeostatic systems underway uh, when, the, when the rest of the meal is consumed. And I guess that raises the interesting question about um, the rate at which we have foods. Maybe um, this is kind of model for um, slow eating, where you might have a bit of carbohydrate at the start of the meal, or salad with a bit of carbohydrate, and you're, there's a bit of a delay before you have the rest of the meal, and maybe the, uh, there'd be some interesting work to do on those effects. And another thing about um, having the, the wheat bix half an hour before the, the, the sorry, the, the kiwi fruit half an hour before the main meal is that uh, it doesn't seem to reduce the 
glycemic and the um, hunger rating. We, we actually measured all of the, um, the axes in the, the satiety scale, but this is just showing you hunger. And there are, um, there are two here. These are the, the um, sun gold substituted, partially substituted wheat bix and the, the wheat bix alone. They're almost identical, but um, with the sun gold 30 minutes before, there's a slight reduction and then it, it resumes its normal or, or as much satiation as the other two. So um, I guess an interesting thing about this is if you had the wheat bix, uh, sorry, the sun gold half an hour before the meal, the intake in the main meal might just naturally compensate because the appetite has been suppressed. And that would certainly make um, incorporation of kiwi fruit into the diet easier. So um, I mentioned at the start that we're starting off some research that's funded by high value nutrition. And this just shows um, in red, in the red box is what we're doing at the moment. Uh, we've, we're just getting underway with our high value nutrition research and it's really aimed at um, looking at the effects of kiwi fruit within a more realistic context in European and Asian meals and that sort of contributes to um, the basis for being able to make health claims. And um, then we'll move on next year to looking at the long-term effects of kiwi fruit supplementation or inclusion in the diet in healthy subjects, looking, looking for metabolic effects, which will be a challenge in the healthy subjects. And then um, after that, we'll be looking at the effects in pre-diabetic pre subjects. So we'll be um, extending our measurements a lot more uh, to insulin response and a number of biomarkers <coughs> that show the effects of, of, of um, high blood glucose like oxidative stress and inflammation. And um, at that point, I'd like to say thank you. And, uh, Again, it's been a great honour to speak about something as uh, wonderful as kiwi food. And I mean that because I think it's a great, great food to um, incorporate into a healthy diet. I also work in the, um, the um, gut health area of kiwi fruit, and that's very interesting. The highly swollen fibres that I showed you uh, in the foregut at the start virtually disappear by the time the colons reach. So it's a really interesting question um, of what, what do we attribute the laxative effect of kiwi fruit to? And uh, it's, I guess that's maybe one reason why kiwi fruit can attain its laxative effect without the um, influence of bloating. It's because it's managed to do it without relying on um, an excessive amount of bulk in the colon. So um, I'll finish there, thanks. <clears throat>